Hi guys, it is another hot, sticky summer day in Austin, Texas here. We have made it to another Monday morning, the first Monday in June, June 2nd, 2014. And I got to get on my gas-sucking bicycle to pedal two miles uphill in the blazing sun so I can go earn my $12 an hour. But before I do, let me do, hopefully this won't uh, go on for 30 minutes, but who knows. Let me pour my planet saving cup of organic coffee while I still have it to pour and turn on the mainstream media headlines to read between the lines uh, about how this planet is diving deeper into the end times. I'm not even going to bother with the uh, alternative media today. This picture worth a thousand words about describing life in the end times is not in South Austin, Texas. This is in some slum in China. Some city over there in China where this woman, I guess, she's just taking, getting her 40 winks wherever she can probably making her, if she's lucky, one dollar a day to... But, well, you know, look, look, what does this woman's life hold? And right next to it, China to Syria. This is what Syria looked like yesterday. Well, all the bombs are blasting everywhere. The civil defense guys, the Red Cross guys, grabbing the little children out of the rubble. So where are they taking these little children? Look, look, look at look at these three little kids, guys. Uh, we don't know in this uh, if their parents are dead or alive. What the hell do these three children have to look forward to? They have to look forward to kicking soccer balls around the ruins. Uh, when I think of when I think about what a two-year-old American child has to face in his life. Good Lord. Just, just what is going on through this child's head right now? As he stares ahead into his future in the end times. Okay. And I've just picked out a few stories to share with you here, uh, the probably the main story on the internet today, the number one story, I guess this is happening right now, is Barack Obama, that planet-saving Barack Obama, uh, talking about uh, how he is saving the planet with these coal-powered plants uh, cutting, uh, cutting down on the emissions and all over the mainstream media is talking about a 30% cut. And good for the Atlantic Wire. The Atlantic Wire coming in with several stories about what absolute unadulterated horse shit. It is uh, Barack Obama claiming that his new plan to attack coal-fired pow power plants is going to save this planet. This is one of, of several of their stories from the Atlantic Wire, good for them, pointing out the unadulterated horseshit coming out of Associated Press and Reuters. This is one of several of Atlantic Wire stories that I picked the EPA's dramatic new plan may not be so dramatic after all. And so what they do is they, is they break down uh, this big plan to address climate change. Okay, and what is being described as the, quote, the strongest action ever taken by the United States government to fight climate change, which is exactly what it is, this do-nothing proposal. 
the EPA will reportedly unveil a plan to cut carbon emissions by 30 percent by the year 2030. This is all over the mainstream media. There's one problem is that the plan is based on carbon pollution statistics from 25 and here is where things get interesting and the problem is is that this horseshit 30 percent cut which is already a joke is in fact only a 15 percent cut from today's levels this is the, this little secret that they didn't want to go it is not any 30 percent cut it is a 15 percent cut and uh, let's see so you can imagine uh, what all the coal industry and the Koch brothers are talking about how, how this absolute joke little uh, pretense to uh, about the greenies uh, th 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 this is going to do nothing nothing to talk about uh, co2 emissions on this planet but but that's the fact and then another one i liked is that they're actually this is the atlantic wire also they're actually reporting this morning from the chambers counting the incandescent lights in the uh in the epa chambers in washington where this hearing is being held that uh, all of this you know all of this epa talk how the rest of us are going to save the planet by screwing in these little curly q light bulbs well what is good for the rest of us is not good enough for the epa who still has their good old-fashioned uh, energy intensive light bulbs incandescent light bulbs burning to illuminate the unbelievable hypocrisy uh, of the Obama administration acting like they're there under the light of the incandescent light bulbs to talk about fighting climate change okay the, this other story which apparently was written th this must obviously have been a press release written by the Koch brothers I guess either the Koch brothers or T Boone Pickens or some major fracking operation and delivered to Reuters News and Reuters News just uh, re just probably just printed a press release from the fossil fuel industry to report it as news in the mainstream media today and the editors of Yahoo News just passing it along to the rest of us this is a Reuters News special report how fracking helps America beat German industry and so what they do in this interesting insider report is they compare the energy cost for doing business in Germany versus uh, the energy cost of doing business in the United States uh, thank you to fracking and you know how Germany is pressing ahead with all these green energy initiatives while the United States is pressing ahead with fracking and uh, so they're pointing out the end result after five years of this is that Germany's cost of doing business for these big industries uh, has has gone up 70 percent in Germany uh, while 
it has fallen 22% in the U.S. Thank you to fracking. And so then it's talking about how all of these other big planet-eating industries, they talk about these chemical firms, they talk about BMW automakers, how they're moving back into the U.S. Thank you to fracking, bringing down the cost of doing business in the U.S. And uh, anyway, this is a long, involved story cheering on fracking. In the United States, electricity prices are falling thanks to natural gas derived from fracking. Right there. And Peter Huntsman, chief executive of some planet-eating whatever, calls the United States the new global standard for low-cost manufacturing thank you to fracking. And what did he say? Quote, it's not a question of whether other countries are competitive or not. They're not. And, and I love this, uh, how it talks about uh, how average labor cost in China have more than doubled since 2007, more than doubled since 2007 to two dollars per, per hour while they've remained steady in the U.S. at $18 an hour, half again what I'm getting ready to go make. And when you factor in the cost of shipping goods from Asia, it's little wonder that America has reemerged as one of the most competitive places to build stuff. To build stuff. Good for the United States, thanking, uh, thanks to fracking, the U.S. is re-emerging as one of the best places to build stuff. And you heard it in a Reuters News special report. Okay, let's take a, a look at a few more stories around the planet and I really got to get out of here so I'll probably cut this one short. Okay, what's going on over there in Japan? Here uh, in early June, Japan heat wave kills two hundreds taken to the hospital as I guess it was 91 degrees in Tokyo yesterday, which is, I think, about what it's supposed to be in Austin, Texas today as I climb on my gas-sucking bike in the noonday sun to get to work to paint a house in the noonday sun after being on a roof in the afternoon sun yesterday, but I ain't dead yet. Okay, and what's going on over there in Iran? Dust storm roars into Iran, killing five. That's what it looked like in downtown Tehran. A heavy dust storm roared into Iran's capital Monday, blackening out the sun in a swirling cloud and tearing down trees in a squall that killed five people and injured 30. And it, it, it never tells anywhere in the article where this killer dust storm emerged from. From killer dust storms in Iran to Sub-Saharan Africa. Let's go visit a soccer game in Nigeria. So, as Sub-Saharan Africa collapses, 
where is everyone head to? They head to the Sunday afternoon soccer game. And in Nigeria, that was the last mistake that 40 people made yesterday as bombing at Nigerian soccer match kills at least 40 soccer fans. There you go. The last thing that these 40 people saw in Nigeria before having the lights turned out was some guys kicking a little ball around a field. As their country and their lives collapsed around them, they were cheering on some guys kicking a little ball around the field, and then the bomb went off, and they were dead. And that's the end of that story from Nigeria. From uh, Nigeria, let's go to one of the planet's uh, most environmentally intact countries anywhere on the planet. If you had to pick out one country on this planet that was still pretty much environmentally intact, it would be Suriname. And we now see this story. Will a mine spoil one of the world's greenest countries? And I like this. Uh, this is from this, this group, Take Part. Dot com talking about this reporter talking about a particularly gruesome email came in the other morning from Suriname a beautiful country on the northeastern shoulder of South America and uh, let's see the beauty of Suriname is that it has somehow managed to remain almost entirely undeveloped. It is still 85% forested and thus one of the greenest countries in the world. And guess what? This is the mining company Suralco moving in to the Nassau mountains getting ready to destroy the planet eaters are now moving in to one of the greenest uh, countries on the planet getting ready to destroy it. Okay, this is from the environmental impact report from this multinational uh, mining company quote that we endorse the concept of conservation of biodiversity by operating in a manner that minimizes impacts on natural habitats and biological resources. Close quote. There you go. Good for the planet eaters. All right. Let's see. Uh, the more important stories. Yeah, this is true. For this is at the very bottom of this story, and I'm just gonna finish out my. Uh, my rant here talking about my biggest problem with the mainstream media is not what they put in, it's what they leave out. And what they're talking about is every time a piranha nips somebody, it's all over the mainstream media news. That that is what the mainstream media wants is piranha attacks. As no, as piranhas are sensational and attract headlines, but the more important stories pass quietly beneath 
the surface and they have to do with the steady grinding power of industrial development rooted in our, meaning American consumers, casual but seemingly endless demand for a can of soda, a takeout container from the lunch place, or yet one more roll of aluminum foil, all which overwhelm efforts at conservation. The only way, the only way to stop mining in the Nassau Mountains for good, the Nassau Mountains in Suriname or anywhere else on this planet is not to fight the planet eaters. It is to reach American consumers. American consumers supporting these sons of bitches and to put pressure directly on Suralco's American parent, Alcoa Aluminum, who is, who is behind this one, uh, is Alcoa Aluminum hiding behind this little uh, South American corporation so they can sell more cans of Coke to American consumers. Thank you, Take Part, for uh, pointing this out. And meanwhile, not surprisingly, recommendations by conservationists for a nature park in the Nassau Mountains have gone nowhere. There you go, and that will just have to suffice for my healthy planet sick economy, healthy economy, sick planet roundup is from this new aluminum, this new bauxite aluminum mine in one uh, of the most uh, protected countries left on this planet. But I gotta wrap up this rant because I am already running late and I got to get on my gas sucking bicycle if I do not die of heat stroke on the way to work maybe I'll die when I get there working for twelve dollars an hour but I gotta remember that a Chinese factory worker making uh, shit such as this computer and this camera is after doubling their wages, doubling their wages in the last five years, ha are making two dollars an hour, uh, while I am making twelve. So who am I to bitch? Bye, guys.